The next exotic destination is the one-time capital of Pakistan and now the country's major port and trading centre. No photographs have come to light of either the steam or horse tramways, but fortunately film does exist of the fuel-powered trams which ran for over 60 years. Dating from 1924, 94 was the first of a new design of 51 petrol trams built by the East India Tramways Company. After the war, 13 cars were built with diesel engines. Fuel pumps dominated the entrance to the depot and works facility off Bunder Road. Karachi's first couple of English-built petrol trams had displaced some horse trams in 1909. Then the British-financed East India Tramways Company gradually expanded its operations until the system was more or less completed by 1916. Conversion from petrol to diesel started in the late 30s, just before the system was acquired by the Muhammad Ali Tramways Company. Ray Muller, a captain in the American Merchant Navy, took these scenes shortly after his ship had docked. Latterly, service on this three-mile route to the port only operated at peak times, ferrying dock workers to and from central Karachi. All the cars were 28 feet long and rode on eight-foot wheelbase trucks. Latterly, they had simplex gearboxes and Perkins P4 engines mounted beneath the center seat. Look out for telltale wisps of exhaust fumes. During his visit, Jeff Todd captured all the atmosphere of this bustling tramway with its fleet of 64 virtually identical vehicles. All seated 50 passengers on five sets of back-to-back -back benches with padded backs. Those seats behind the driver were officially reserved for ladies only. The conductor made regular use of the footboards and in bad weather shutters could be lowered. Drivers had a throttle key, a gear lever and a clutch pedal, as well as the usual foot-operated gong. All this equipment would have to be transferred at each stub terminal, where there was also a waiting supply of watering cans for filling the radiators. The only braking was by means of a handbrake at each end. Most visitors recall the trams as being quite nifty, with a top speed of about 25 miles an hour. The 10-mile system was mostly double track, but there were some sections of single line working.
approaching the main terminus at Boulder Market with its unusual roadside loading. Only cars heading for the port proceeded beyond this point. It is believed that the entire network closed altogether in 1972. Despite its huge population, India only had five operating tramways and two trolleybus systems. No film has come to light of the trams of Kaumpur, Madras and Delhi, nor the system at Banarish, which was built but never opened. Hugh Borman did take these rare slides of Delhi's meter gauge trams in late 1961, shortly before the system closed. Delhi had also been home to an experimental trolleybus operation. These cars probably dated from the opening of the system in 1908. The Bombay Electric Supply and Tramways Company, or BEST, always prided itself on copying London's lead, even down to naming one group of cars the LCC class. Horse trams had first arrived in 1874. Electrification began in 1907 and the last extension opened in 1935. After the war, ownership of the BEST passed to the Bombay municipality, together with some 420 trams. A tramway replacement programme was instigated in 1953 and by 1964 the entire 31-mile system would be gone. Only one route, the three and a half mile 10, was replaced by trolleybuses. However, the 12 Skoda single deckers had a very short life, lasting from June 1962 to March 1971. By the beginning of 1960, there were still approximately 150 cars the oldest being the survivors of a once numerous class of coupled two-axle trains. The other single-deckers came from New York. 25's Third Avenue cars similar to these were dispatched to India under the Marshall Plan in early 1949. On arrival, their bodies were narrowed, the doors removed and the platforms tapered. For British visitors, it was the double-deckers that impressed, although the original 15 single truckers had all gone by 1939. However, most of the 58 bogey cars built by the company in the early 20s were still active in 1960. In deference to London, they were known as the LCC class and rode on LCC-type maximum traction trucks. Between 1934 and 1951, the company built a further 48 upgraded versions.
Also still in evidence in 1960 were most of the one-time fleet of 23 centre entrance Pullmans dating from 1937 to 1939. However, shortly after independence in 1947, these Pullmans had had their centre doors removed. Sadly, no film survives of this magnificent state-of-the-art 86-seater built by English Electric in 1932. These next sequences were filmed at various times between 1960 and 1963 by Messrs. Collinson, Santarelli and Todd. First, views of cars on routes replaced during the first swathe of closures in the early 1960s, although precise closure dates are not always known. The line serving Tardeo and Gualia tank were amongst the busiest on the system, requiring over 50 cars in rush hours. Rare views of the two-axle couple trains. in the Tardeo Gualia tank neighbourhoods. The line to remain was a truncated portion of Route 5, operating every seven and a half minutes between Boribunda and Dardi. These next sequences follow the 5 and 5A when they were still working the full eight miles from the city centre to King's Circle by a mix of Pullmans, LCC, and X Third Avenue cars. In key cars, 55 trams have been needed. On leaving the city's museum terminus, the fives headed past several imposing Victorian civic buildings before making their way northwards towards Dardy. Due to the height of some floats in the city's religious processions, 
The overhead was set very high at 21 foot 9 inches. En route there was evidence of recently abandoned lines. Reminiscent of modern layouts in English cities like Birmingham, Leeds and Liverpool, the final three miles was on Central Reservation, the last section of which dated from June 1935. The decision to abandon the loss-making system seems to have been based on rising electricity costs, over cheap fares and the opening of the Ashok Leyland bus plant. Also the company may well have opted to follow London's example by implementing a tram scrapping policy. One of the former centre entrance pullmans. another recently repainted Pullman. Although no official ceremony was arranged to mark the final closure, thousands thronged the route, applauding car 103, packed to the gills, as it processed slowly into the history books on the 31st of March, 1964. Following the closure, 45 sets of maximum traction trucks, controllers and motors were sold for further use in Calcutta.